What's up, everybody? Welcome to Transition Tuesdays for this Tuesday, September 1st. Man, September 1st, 2020. I am your host, Russ Williams. I'm so glad you could be here today. I'm quite aware you could have been anywhere in this world today. You could have been anywhere in this world today. But you decided to be here with me. And I appreciate that. And more importantly, I appreciate you. So welcome to Transition Tuesdays. So guys, I have a special guest on the line. I'm going to introduce this young lady in a second. But before we do that, I always like to state my intentions for Transition Tuesdays. And they, they don't waver. They never change. My intentions is to give you the opportunity to laugh, smile, think, and engage in honest conversations about your life's difficult or transitions at all. So that's what we do here on Transition Tuesdays. And speaking of honest conversations, I have on here my special guest. And I want to talk to you a little bit about my special guest because she is a... Uh, I like to tell her as a storyteller. She she tells great stories, and I wanted her to come on to, to tell her story, get a chance to tell her story, because I'm all about, you know, you should tell your stories. Stories are mean to be told and not buried. So I want this young lady by the name of Miss Gallagher. Miss Gallagher, you there, ma'am? Yeah, I am. All right, great. So we got Miss Gallagher here. We're going to talk about some stories, some different things that are going on. Uh, you know, we're going to be talking about who we support and this and that, that and this, but we're just going to have some fun here. And, uh, again, I'll be taking any questions that you might have for Ms. Gallagher. We'll definitely do that and we'll have a great conversation. We got Mark joining us today. What's going on, Mark? Welcome to Transition Tuesday, sir. So, Ms. Gallagher, now, hey, I'm glad you can, I'm glad you could join us, Ms. Gallagher. A little bit about Ms. Gallagher. Ms. Gallagher has known my mom, Miss May, and Ms. Gallagher, my mom, Miss May, she comes. She she's part host. Sometimes she comes on my show. So, you know, I know you have a, a big time relationship with my mom. You've known my mom well over fifty plus years, right? I think, right? Almost. Yeah, right, man. So that's that's friendship, man. So you know, we're gonna be talking about that. So, Miss Gallagher, I like to have my guests feel at home. So I'm gonna play a song for you. That this song came out. I'm gonna say. Wow, late 60s, this song came out. So I want you to take a listen and tell me if you can recognize this particular song by this particular artist. Okay, hang tight for a second. Tell me if you can hear it. Can you hear that, Miss Gallagher? Yeah, it's not, yeah, but it's low. It's low, okay, all right. <laughs> well, what's being played... Is James Brown? I'm black and I'm proud. Do you, do you remember? You remember James Brown, right? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, James Brown. I'm black and I'm proud. And I remember when that song came. Well, I don't remember because I don't think I was born at the time. But about, but, but you remember when that song came out? How, how was that when you first heard that song? You know, say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. You know, how, how was that song for you? Did that did that instill in prideness for you, like being black? How was that when that song came out? When you first heard that song here? How, how, how was it for me? Yeah, how was it for you? Yeah, how was it? How, what type of feeling did it bring for you when you heard James Brown singing Say It Loud, I'm Black and I'm Proud? Well, I thought it was Right, that's right. Miami, Florida is your home, right? Yeah. Okay. James Rogers used to come down every, and we had a place out in Miami called The Pool. Uh-huh. It was The Pool. He was swimming in the day on, and he was going through on Sundays for Friday night. Uh-huh. Saturday night. Oh, my God. James Brown would be up there. Ah, so you attended, you, you attended some concerts by James Brown when he was in there. So, but... What were you? Yeah, he was coming to my house. You know, I was surprised when he came out and made a hit because James Brown used to come all the way, always came down to the Florida of Miami to have a place called the pool. Mm -hmm. And he would be sitting in that pool and, and he would do the buck dance. Well, we call it the buck dance. The buck dance. Did, did, did you do like the mashed potato and all that too? Did you do all that? Oh, he did all those things on the stage. Oh. And he sang and we, that pool used to be. On Friday, mm. Saturday night, and then Sunday night, he 
I need a snack because everybody go to church. But I'm telling you, Friday, Saturday night, uh -huh. James Brown had that pool jumping. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure you were dancing during that time too, right, Miss Gallagher? Yeah, I was home during that time. I, you know, I didn't know how to go inside, but mm -hmm. when I did go in and you know go inside, because everybody was dancing. Mm -hmm. They used to dance at that pool. That's when they used to do the swing and the jitter bug and all those kind of dances. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not your time. That's in my time. They right. jitter bug and swing and dance. And I tell you, they dance uh, up till three in the morning. Oh. James Brown. You know, all the big bands used to come to Miami. Mm -hmm. There's a place called The Pool. The Pool, okay. Yeah, and they would swing on Friday night and Saturday night. Uh-huh. Sunday they'll do it too, but everybody used to go to church on Sunday, but right. that, that didn't stop him. If James Brown came in town. He, yep, you were going to get down, right? <laughs> James Brown came in town. James Brown had him jumping. Mm, mm. Now, no, yeah, it, well, oh, man, you can't tell me about James Brown. James Brown was a boy. Boy, Not was like, uh, uh, uh. Of the, of the dance world when he was out there swinging. Yeah, yeah. So I'm so I'm so glad I got a chance to play him for you as well. So we got Karen joining us. That's what's going on, Karen. Welcome to Transition Tuesdays. We also got Smooth Uncle Smooth Chris Williams joining us. What's going on, Smooth? Welcome to Transition Tuesdays, everybody. Hey, so so Miss Miss Gallagher, I just I always start with my guest is um, you know, how have you been coping with this pandemic, this COVID-19? Are you safe where you are? Because you live in Manhattan, right? You live in New York, correct? Yeah, I, you know, I really don't have to let that bother me. Okay. Really, i tell you the truth because I'm used to all kinds of uh, problems and excitement. Mm -hmm. When I was young and we came along and, and, and we always had something like that when we were young children mm. where there were uh, things that happened mm -hmm. and uh, we had, sometimes we had to stay out of school. Yeah. And then uh, our parents would support us, mm -hmm. and then we had teachers that support us. And I always came through a, a hardship struggle right. at, uh, during those days when we was going to, going mm -hmm. to school. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like it is now. Right, but right. people didn't let that bother us because when they went to work, mm -hmm. and they came home from work. Right. And Saturday, Sunday they'll go to church. That's church day. Church day. You can't miss church. You can't miss the church on Sunday. Right, right. And then, but Saturday night, Friday, Saturday night, <laughs> that was spring cock. <laughs> I hear you, I hear you. I know, I know that was a, yeah, I know you, so you're kind of used to this pandemic and everything like that, but you're safe though, right? That's the most important thing. So you're safe during this pandemic, you know, during this COVID-19, correct? Right, right. Good. I, I mean, you, you know, it was, this happened back then in my time, back in those days. Mm -hmm. uh, people, people wouldn't, wouldn't have let that bother them as much as they do here. And they still, you know what they do, though? They still would put their clothes on. And if that pool was open, they go to the pool and jump swing. Jump. Oh, even in the pandemic, they'll they'll do they'll just do they'll just jump in the pool and just just do that, huh? <laughs> they want to dance. So they ain't stay no house and swing. You can have to be mm -hmm. torture. Right. So people have to go out because I see when we've had bad storms. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm from Miami, Florida. Right. And right. I see when we've had bad storms mm -hmm. and and come in and mm -hmm. everybody had to fatten down. Right, right. That so didn't stop them from going out. Uh, maybe that night might be bad. Kind of, mm -hmm. We kind of bad. Nobody gonna could be able to get out that night. Right. But the next night, when that even if the storm passes over mm -hmm. and pass by, they be out there in that pool and they be jumping. They said, and, and depending on the the, the big bad officer who was there, because they used to have common bases, you know, jack. Uh -huh. All those big time, big, big time music musicians used to come down to Florida. Gotcha, gotcha. And we had a place called the pool. Uh -huh. And when they were there, <laughs> <laughs> hey, so Miss Gallagher, so like basically the people of today is kind of soft compared to the people back then, right? I mean, because oh. back then people be able to handle pandemics, bad weather, right? We're a little, we're a little soft here in these, these, these neck of the woods nowadays, right? Because look, we had to go through, you know, we almost went through something like this in Miami. Mm -hmm. and not, not, even, not even Miami, all of the South. Because I remember when two Michael Locusts came out. Mm. Just like this. Right, gotcha, gotcha. Illness. Yeah, illness, right. Uh huh. And President Roosevelt.
well, he was the president at that time. Mm-hmm. And people was getting that sickness and they were dying. Yeah, they were dying, right? Yeah, uh-huh. And he had to find a way to, to protect the, the people. people in this country. Right. What did he do? Came up with a solution and they, they discovered an uh, injection for everybody. So, a va- so there was a vaccine. You call it a vaccine, but we call it, they gave it to us, and they caused a tuberculosis shot, and everybody in this country had to take that injection. Mm, so everybody was lined up. Were they okay after they took the injection? Like Yes, because they cleared it up. They cleared the TV up, because I'm telling you, people were dying from tuberculosis. They don't know where it came from, but all they know is they, was, they, they got it. It was a dangerous disease, mm-hmm. and they had to quarantine people who got it and put it in the hospital. Mm-hmm. And, Sounds and, familiar, right? right? And, and people was, and the president, it was during that time when President Roosevelt, he had the final solution mm-hmm. to discover something to stop it. Mm-hmm. And then they, they did find something. They found uh, the shot they called the tuberculosis shot. Mm-hmm. And everybody in this country i had to take that injection mm. you had to take it well hold, hold that hold that thought miss gallagher we're going to talk about presidents okay so and i want to talk about we're going to talk about injections too because i'm sure vaccines are going to be you know when it's all said and done with this pandemic vaccines are going to occur so we're going to talk about that but let's talk a little bit of politics now uh miss gallagher you you are a uh you're a republican correct no i'm not no republican you're not uh-uh. What are you? Well, I've been supporting the Democrats, but I was, I was independent. Oh, okay, so you're independent, okay. I was independent to the to, to the politicians, but then after things went along down the line, mm-hmm. then I started, uh, I began to look into some of the issues, and, and I used to hear the, 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 the side of the Republicans and the side of the Democrats. But uh-huh. see, during that time, during the, uh, I got into politics. Mm-hmm. I got into politics because I had certain people who was running for office. Right. Especially out of our community where we was living up there in Douglas. Right, uh-huh. And things like that. So they dragged me on and dragged me in, and uh, I started supporting the Democrats instead of the Republicans. Gotcha. I always used to hear bad things about the Republicans, and when we was children, you know, the Republicans always... uh uh of starving the the, the, the uh, poor and the, and the and the Republicans was the rich. Uh huh. So most of the uh, the people in the country was uh Democrats. Mm-hmm. And they were Democrats basically because of President Roosevelt. Mm. Hey, hold that thought for a second, Miss Gallagher. We have uh we got Alex joining us. What's going on, Alex? We got uh Manira joining us. My apologies if I'm uh, mispronouncing the name. My apologies. Uh, we also got Ross Ross joining us so far too. That's great. Good stuff. We're joining us. We're here with my special guest, Miss Gallagher, joining us. We're talking a little bit of politics right now. So hey, look, I know we're talking politics, right? And so I, so now I'm getting the gist of it. So you're not. I thought you were a Republican, but you're not. So you're even more of an independent. But let me ask you this: I know you're. Are you are you a fan of this president, President Trump, at all? Trump. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. I'm not a problem, Trump. Okay, you are you are a fan of Trump. Okay, so hey, look, here's my question. You you remember back in the day when you know, remember Ed Koch who used to be the mayor of New York and he and his big slogan was, "How am I doing?" Right? Yeah. You you remember that, Miss Gallagher? Yes, I was in New York at that time. Okay, got you. So like, so what would you say? Like, how do you think this president is doing? Like, you, how is this president doing in your eyes? And before you answer that, Miss Gallagher, I want to see who else is joining us. We got. We got Rich joining us. What's going on, Rich? We also got Keisha from the D joining us. What up, though? Got us joining here talking to Miss Gallagher. So, Miss Gallagher, how do you think, you know, this president is doing in your eyes, like from your lens? How, how do you think this president is doing? I think he's doing a uh, 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 pretty, good, pretty good job. I don't say 100%, but I think uh, okay. Donald Trump. Right. Donald Trump, I like Donald Trump. I think he's doing a good job. Donald Trump is back there. I was a little older than Donald but right. He, he was back there in my time. Right, back in the day. He uh-huh. had all these sickness coming in the country. Mm-hmm. He was back there doing this. I don't even know if he ever was he drafted in the military or not. But I remember when men in this country back then and down some time and it, even, you know, and even in his father's area, 
even though we had all the racism there was in this country, in this world. Right, we're going to talk about racism too a little later. Right, I got you. Yeah, continue. You didn't stop people from joining hands and making sure they support the United States of America, okay? Mm -hmm. That was the biggest thing we had to do was support this country. And men came out. I'm okay, we went back to the Second World War. Right. With, uh, so World War Two, okay. World War Two. Nobody was expecting us to even have a war. Right. Like Roosevelt was the president at the time. But right. So they were just trying to come out of the depression and get the country back together because that country, that 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 bank fold, this country we we're under. Right. But, hey, so Miss Gallagher, so just to piggyback on Roosevelt, so. Do you think Roosevelt was a was a good president in your eyes? Like, did he help this country? Because I know you talked about, you know, he did the vaccine when we had sickness, and and now you're talking about that. Do you think he was a good country? Was he, he was a good president? And before you answer that, I just want to compare him to like a President Trump. So, you know, what what's your thoughts on that? He reminds me a little president, uh, the president of the United States, President uh, uh, Roosevelt, when he came into the country. Mm -hmm. See, I was a little older than Trump, but Trump. Grab and grab behind me. I was like pulling Trump in. I remember when President Roosevelt was the president of the country and how we was in, we were trying to get out of the, the, the uh, depression. Right. And and they came down with a sickness called TB. Okay. And that tuberculosis was killing people left and right. Right, tuberculosis. Right. Okay. That's right. And President Roosevelt had to quarantine people to find a solution to get. Everybody in this country, an uh, injection, mm -hmm. so they can come back to TV. The same virus that they talk about now reminds me of that. Right. They quarantine everybody in the country. And right. then we quarantined us, we had to take those injections. Right. And when we took the injection, it, lead a, it left a scar on your arm. Mm -hmm. you, you can see it now. It leaves a scar there. Right. And that tells you you had that injection. Right. Once you get that injection, you were safe from getting a germ like what they have now. Right. And TB, that sense, will protect you from that type of a germ. Mm -hmm. This reminds me of that when we were children. And that was the only way President Roosevelt could have bring this country back into some kind of insanity with the health of this country. Because two bunker locals was a killer. Right. It was taking people out left and right. Right. And right. And people who got there had to quarantine them in, in the hospital. You couldn't go and get to see them because they had that disease. And mm -hmm. when they, when, when they, was, they had to find something right. to cure it. And what they did was it was able to get tuberculosis, a serum for tuberculosis, and everybody who was in this country had to take that injection. Mm -hmm. So take so let me ask you a question, Ms. Gallagher. So, okay, so we're, we're going to compare... Roosevelt, with this current president, do you think this current president can take us out of this pandemic to, to higher heights? Can can we get out of this? Can we get out of this pandemic with this president, this current president? We may can get out of this pandemic with President uh, uh, Donald Trump because, in some sense, I'm older than Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. But Donald Trump was like. Uh, Let's see. He was dragging on my my spring tail. His father was right. in that crisis when I was in in the, in, in, the, in those crises. Right. His father was up to uh 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 uh. We used to call him crackers, you know. And yeah. No, I understand. That's okay. <laughs> and, but that's the kind of <laughs> uh uh uh. uh Second Donald Trump came out of right. He was a new boy, but we all scuffled through all these things, all these germs, and all these diseases. And like I say, I go back when we came into it. Mm -hmm. President Roosevelt was the president, and he had to find a way to save the country. Right. He so was dying left and right with that sickness. Do yeah. you think? Do you think this particular president is capable of getting us out of this pandemic? I think so. If we stick with this, if we get a serum and give us everybody those injections like we had to do back then when I was coming over TV, okay, we will get out of it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah, that can give all of us an injection short mm -hmm. that we have all uh, had it. Right. It'll get us out. And get when we, we had those two working local shots, when they gave it to us, it left the scar on your arm. 
Right, right, right. And that skull, you know, is supposed to catch some people's skull uh, uh, died away. Uh -huh. But it stays on your arm, and it's a around uh, Yeah, that's what happens to this day now with TB shots, yeah. Because sometimes, that, you know, that, teachers okay. have to take that's those, the, yeah. That's the TB shot. Yeah. And that's the shot that saved this country, because people was getting TB, and they were dying left and right, the same way this virus is going on right now. Right. right. Gotcha, gotcha. Hey, so, you know, we, you touched upon it briefly, and you, we had conversations offline beforehand. Do you think, because, uh, again, I want to get your viewpoints, and, again, you know, everybody has an opinion, and that's why I like to talk to people who have an opinion different from me, which is great, and I think we can learn a lot from each other by us having a conversation. As, as we have my man Steve joining us, we also have Pete joining us. Welcome, guys, to Transition Tuesdays. Welcome, everybody, to Transition Tuesdays. Hey, so... Here's my question for you. You know, we talk, we still talk about this this current president now. In some people's eyes, Miss Gallagher, they they see they see this president, you know, like as having bad behavior. Do, do you feel like this president exhibits bad behavior, or are are you able to like disregard his bad behavior and just you know just him being the president? Like, what's your take on his behavior as president of these United States? You know, I can't. You know. Problems with Donald Trump, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, and why is that? I'm I'm a, I'm a little older than Donald, but Donald fails me. Uh, he took it too far back then, back back in those days when we had uh, hate and racism in this country. Right. Yeah, and I'm I'm gonna have you talk about a story you shared with me about racism, which is a great story. I'm gonna have you share with that, but but continue, Miss Gallagher. I'm sorry. And and Donald Trump came came along at that at that time when. People, poor people had to work, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, we had the WTA, and the, the people who had money uh -huh. uh, was able to live a little better than the people who was poor in the country. Right. But you know, the people in the country who was poor, they were happy. Right. They didn't let them to work, but they went to work. Yeah, yeah. Went to, went to work on the on the farm. I was, when I was a child, right. we used to always have everybody I born to speak. Right. And, 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 and my dad used to always work and, and leave my mother home with children because my mother had a lot of children. Mm -hmm. And we always had them come back and they had come back and what they made on the bean farm. Mm -hmm. So we would say, we want to go to the bean farm. Right, but, okay. <laughs> my mother would say, my daddy be them going to work. And we would say, but we have come back and see how much was changed and made and that, that, that. So we wanted to go. So I'm going to say, you want to go to the farm, all right? I'm going to say you. Right. And sure enough, we would get, had to get up early in the morning and get ourselves ready. You didn't go in no nice clothes. You had to get good old rag clothes. Right. Right. And you, <laughs> <laughs> you had to okay. get on the truck. I had to. Get on that v farm truck. And all the grown people was with us. And they put us <laughs> on the truck. And then when we get to the bean farm, oh, they get off the truck. The man give you a crate. Right. And you tell you, you take that room, and you take that room, and you have a room from here, all the way, all the way, I believe, where you live in, on those rows of beans. And right. you have to pick them beans until you get a whole basket full. And then when you get a basket full, you'll go up to the truck to the man, and he'll weigh it, and he'll see how much you weigh, it, and right. he'll pay you a new change. And you won't get a lot of money, but right. in those days, time, if you made two dollars off a of crate, Right. So, so you, so, so, Miss Gallagher, so you comparing? Okay, so I know that that experience, and I, I appreciate you sharing that story. So, like you, so like the original question I asked you was like, you know, do you think, you know, are you okay with you know President's behavior, President Trump's behavior, and you try to equate it to that? So you're okay with that, man? I mean, it's, it doesn't bother you. It's not, it's not a concern of yours, right? You know, when for this particular president, correct? I, 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 I keep hearing people saying this red ass. They don't like his behavior. A behavior on what? Speaking out and telling you the facts of the truth. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So you good, you good with him telling the facts. Okay, I gotcha. Hey, we have Chili D joining us. What's going on, Chili D, man? Hey, again, if I didn't get a chance to tell you, Chili D, my, my condolences for your mom, uh, Miss Eve. Uh, you know, that was a person that was, you know, really kind to me and kind to my family. So my condolences to you, Chili D. I didn't get a chance to talk to you. My condolences to you, my man. I'm glad you're joining us here today on Transition Tuesdays. Hey, so 
So, Miss Miss Gallagher, I want to ask you this question. So, again, you have no issues with his with this behavior, and that's fine. You know, that's cool. Now, some people might call this particular president a racist, right? W- would you call this president a racist if you had to? Like, you know, do, do you think this guy's racist? I don't see where Donald Trump is a racist. He's speaking his mind. Okay, so he, so in your eyes, you, in your eyes, you think he speaks the truth? So it's like no that's no racial right. overtones. No, nobody wants to have the truth. Donald Trump is not playing. And I understand what Donald Trump is doing and where he's coming from. And I'll tell you something. I'm not the president. If right. I was the president, I would say, come out and say the same thing. Okay. Like, I, got, I have no time to push, to mm-hmm. put around with people in this country. Right. They want to have things to want it their way and get their way. Gotcha. Donald Trump reminds me back in those days that it was racism was rough. And a lot of people live through racism. Yeah. Survive, we survive racism. People yeah. went to work. To uh, save their little money, mm-hmm. and they went to church, and they was happy. <laughs> During all that struggle we went through with racism, we was happy. I remember. Now, now, Miss Miss Gallup, before you begin, I hope you're going to share this story that you talked to me about when you lived in. You know, spe- speaking of racism, when you lived, when you were growing up in Miami, Florida, you got to tell us the story about the KKK that paid a visit to your home. Is that the story you're going to share? Okay, can you share that with us? Talk to us a little bit about your experiences with racism back then. Like you told me earlier, the KKK knocked on your parents' door. So what happened next? Well, when they knocked on my parents' door, we were not living too far from uh, the way Florida is. We was not living too far from some of the white sections mm-hmm. and the black sections. And some of those uh, KKK people lived close to us. Right. We lived uh, away from us. Okay. I remember when people uh, was, was, was on the same street. Mm-hmm. Across the street was Caucasian. On right. the other side of the street was black. Okay. And you could open, some people could use their front door because they were facing the white community. And so they would have to come around to the back door and come in from the back to go into the house because that's how bad it was in racism. Okay. So people didn't let the racism Stop them right. because white people used to come into the community and help black people do things in the community. I, I don't know about uh, in, in other states. This is true. I don't know about in Miami. This is true. Hey, so talk to us about how. Okay, so that KKK person knocks on your door. What, what happened next when that ha- when it happened? Well, oh, well, during the night, everybody went to bed. Everybody was free. Everything was fine. We always know they had a KKK. Okay. Because they called the Ku Klux Klan. Right. And and, and uh, people went to work. Some people used to work for the KKK. Okay. And, uh, well, during the night, one night, I guess they got out of the head end. Mm-hmm. And, and the black people I was moving too close into the white section. Okay. And so they decided to set a group out into the community where we were living. Because mm-hmm. over there where we were living, it was new, a new part of, of Miami being de- developed. And black people was, was building houses. Okay. Into White Town. So they came out one night. We was all in the house sleeping. Right. right? And they knocked off our door. All right. A KKK I, member. A KKK member. KKK member knocked on your door. Okay. Continue. Right. We was in the house. We were sleeping. With mom and daddy and those old folks, they stay up at night talking and reminiscing. Right, right, like right. So they knocked on our door. Mm-hmm. I guess they did all the other ones. And when they knocked on the door, mm-hmm. they told uh my mother and father said, by tomorrow night this time, they said all niggas have to be out of this community. Whoa. Yes, they did. Okay. What they, what they told my mother that for, Jesus. What'd your, what'd your mother do after that? Oh, the next morning? Uh-huh. She said she leaving her house to go away to nobody. She stayed in her house. She bought this house, and this is where she going to raise her church. My okay. mother took herself and some of the people in the community, because some were scared to go. Right. And we're downtown. Okay. To the American, to the courthouse. To the courthouse, okay. And told them what had happened that night. Right. They said, oh, they told the niggas to go back in the nigga town. Okay. Well, me, my mother, was a British subject from the Bahamas. She didn't take that chief for two. Right. She said, no. Hell no. I ain't packing my bags, taking my children over. She went to the British Council in Miami on 2nd Okay. Avenue. Okay. The British Consulate. Okay. And told them what happened that night. 
Okay, and what, and what did the British consulate tell you, tell your mom? She told them what they did to them that night. So my mother called, no, not, uh, no, the consul called over to the uh, jailhouse and told them I have some British subjects here. And they told me what happened to them that night. Mm -hmm. so they, came, they came in the room, tell them they got to be out of their home by right. tonight. Right. And the British consul told them in Miami, I am going to tell every one of my British subjects to arm themselves with a gun. And that's the truth. So so what happened after that? So did your parents get a gun after that? What happened? Yes, sir. Daddy went and bought a gun. So your dad went to buy a gun. Okay. And then what happened? So he was waiting for the KKK to return? Or what we do? Night, that night we went to bed. And, oh, I'm sure we had to go to bed. Right. And I was trying to stay awake to say what was going on. And daddy was waiting. All the old people was waiting. Okay. And he was waiting with there with that gun. And daddy said, if they walk across his those steps, I will blow them to pieces. Mm. Do you know? Those KKK didn't come back to the neighborhood. They didn't. They <laughs> they never came back to the neighborhood. No, ma'am. When they told, was told, uh, uh, when they was told by the British consul, right? These are my subjects, and if anything happened to my subjects, I'm ordering every one of them to arm themselves with a gun. And this is no lie. This is a true story. Mm, I believe it. I, I, I'm glad you're telling this story. So they never returned back. So the KKK, you never had no more instances with them, right? No. Mm -hmm. Oh, and my mother is so fighter. She say, "Oh hell, no, she ain't leaving her house and her children." Oh, so I, I see where you get it from, then, Miss Gallagher. Mama <laughs> <laughs> said, "No, she ain't leaving." So daddy and daddy stayed off from work that 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 morning. Right. And when they left, when they left the consulate, and then they went to the courthouse at downtown on Franklin Street, mm -hmm. and they ran her, and the consulate told me about the British stuff. Gotcha. Right. I'm ordering all my British subjects to get themselves a gun. Man. And this is no lie. And I want to tell you, though, and some of those cops, cops and officers downtown on Flatland Street, mm -hmm. they were some of the KKKs. Wow, they were, they were part of the organization, huh? Right, so they knew what was going to happen. Yeah. I can tell you this one thing. After they was told by the British consul of my subjects, if anything happened to them, I'm ordering them to shoot to kill. Mm -hmm. They did not come back in that neighborhood that night. They didn't come by. They, they got the message. They got the message loud and clear. Yes, they did. There and you I go. Because I remember because I was up that night and I was waiting to hand see if they was going to come back because the night before they knocked on everybody's door threatening them. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to wait to see if they were going to come back. Mm -hmm. And daddy went and bought that gun. Mm -hmm. Daddy went and bought that gun. Man, to protect the family. Were, were you were you young at that time, Miss Gallagher? You were pretty young? I was Oh, okay. So you're probably like 10 or 11 or something like that, right? That's right. Might have been younger. And daddy really got that gun. Okay. And bought it in the house. And everybody that night, and I was trying to wait to hear and see if the noise was going to come up. Because we all got to be in. Mm. And all, all the older people stayed up late. Those who had their guns stayed up late. Right. And I was waiting to see if they was going to come back so we could have the shoot up. But I want you to know, when that order went back from the British consulate, and told the police <laughs> down on Fagler Street, that's in Miami. I love it. I, I order my citizens to do, and if any one of them were touched, they are to shoot the kill. Shoot the kill. That gunner, it was in that, that house. There you go. Kept that gun in that house until. And they, and they didn't bother you after all. That, you know what? That's 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 an interesting story, and I'm glad you shared that, Miss Gallagher, because uh, again, they they got the message, you know. And again, those stuff back then. It's kind of going on like right now. I mean, you know, racism is alive and well as we can see, you know. So, but, it is, as always been, but those people, as see, I mean, they were British subjects in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you touch a British subject and then you, the government in this country will have a problem. Mm, and gotcha. Me, my mother knew her rights. She's a smart woman. And my daddy didn't take no teeth for two. Right. They went and got that gun. And we had that gun in that house. Mm hmm. Because he didn't get rid of his gun. Right, right. He had right. that gun in that house, but he kept the gun away from us so we could touch the gun. Yeah, gotcha. But those KKK knew better to come back into that red day blue. Mm -hmm. This is like, they were crossed on one side of the street, and we was on this side of the street, this is the black community. 
Kentucky or right. anybody in the black. Yep. The black side was the Caucasians over that side. Gotcha. And they got, and I want to tell you something. Mm-hmm. Some of the black people was working for some of the KKK people. Wow, isn't that crazy? Man. And they, and they said, oh, yes, they was working. Mm-hmm. I didn't know my mother, she used to like to go out there and come get my mother out of line. That was her name. Uh-huh. And they come get her because my grandmother worked for them to come do some work for them. And I'm, I had to see her mom talking about how she go in and she clean and she open the closet and they would have their white uniforms and stuff inside the house. Mm-hmm. But they didn't touch her, but that was their threat to the black community in that part of the United States when we was coming along, the KKK. Right. And, and, and they were threatening people for that. But Man. They never had a fight, a war with them, but they were fighting people to make people feel like they had to flee. Yeah. The United, the United States will leave Florida. But right. after that incident, mm-hmm. where Mama went downtown and with a group of people, because some of the people that were right. ready Florida, she was from Georgia, and what some of them states that was living there, and they were scared. I'm going to ask some of my mother to say, she ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> she got her children in this house. Right. And she she's buying her house. Uh-huh. And, and my daddy stayed home for work that day, because daddy used to work for the, for the Miami Beast. Mm-hmm. That Gulf Coast on uh, uh, Miami, uh, in Miami on Miami Beach, mm-hmm. College of Fishing Gulf Coast. My daddy was a, uh, um, he was a, I don't say the organizer, but he was a boss of that Gulf Coast. He kept that College of Fishing Gulf Coast spot for Gulf Coast. Right, he was able to take care of that. Yeah. Hey, yeah. you know, you know what? Tubas got not to cut you off, but I, I think like the moral of the story, like with this whole you know, this conversation we having about you know race and racism, that. You know, racism was prevalent there and racism still exists now. From then to now, you know, racism ain't going nowhere. You know, it's it's like a cheap jacket, you know, it ain't going nowhere. It's, you know, it's just gonna it's gonna continue to be here. Right? You agree with that? Yes, it's gonna be it's gonna, it's gonna still be here because you got people out like there gonna wanna take advantage of other people. Yeah. And they're gonna use some of that as uh to trying to get over on, on, on people with racism. Yeah. And, definitely. And, and, but people have to learn you don't have to go to war. You don't have to go kill the one, but you have to speak out and, and, and fight back at it. That's all you got to do. Right. I'll tell you something. They came a long ways with racism in this country. Mm-hmm. Okay? What? People was getting killed left and right. The KKK was killing people. This is and true. And, right. and people was, it was so that people was, was working for some of the, the KKK people, but they didn't let that bother them. Right. They along and, and did their life like they wanted to do their life. And that's Definitely. That's only in Miami, Florida. That yep. was in Georgia, South Carolina, all all the South. We mm-hmm. dealt with the PKT. Hey, hey, them. so so Miss Gallagher, what do you think about now? Okay, so let's fast forward to now. So what do you think about the Black Lives Matter movement? Is that something that you're proud of, you know, being being an African American like you are and like like how I am too? Like are you are you proud of that black are you proud of that Black Lives Matter movement? I don't care for that Black Lives movement. It's really? Why not? I don't need to have the day for the Black Lives Matter. I came up through Black Lives Matter. Do, I just told you what do, we did. Well, do you do you not believe that Black Lives Matter? Is that a, is that an yeah, issue? I believe Black Lives Matter, but I have to get out here and talk about an organization saying Black Lives Matter. Okay, so Black so you so so let me just let me just clarify. So you you are all for for Black Lives Mattering, but you're just not for that movement. Is that correct? That's right. We didn't have to have no movement for that. We were been to we don't know what they business and they had to do. And okay. A lot of people mix with the Caucasians. And a lot of Caucasians are mixed with the, with the blacks. And, yeah. And some of the communities were close together. Okay. Uh, you could live across the street. In okay. those days, uh, like I said, say you couldn't live if you live across the street. You couldn't put your front door and, uh, and the front of that street. Right. You look over on the other side of the street because the white family was doing that. Gotcha. Kind of no more. Nah, I got you. I got you. So, 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 I just want to make sure I'm understanding because you are all you're for Black Lives Matter, and you believe that Black Lives Matter, but you're not necessarily for that Black Lives Matter movement. Like, do you know? Do you know the difference at all, or do you care not to know about the difference, or no? It is a difference. Why do you have to go out and tell people Black Lives Matter? You hear what well, means, and all of us our lives are matter. Well, you, but you, but you know what, Miss Gallagher, I think a lot of people they don't. I think you know maybe they don't have those. They don't think that same way. They don't think that 
you know, black lives do matter because, you know, we're getting done gunned down by these police more than any other group of people. So a lot of times we might have to profess that, say? that black lives matter because a lot of times in these societies, they're thinking that a black lives don't matter. Well, you, you, this is a, this is an issue between the policemen's and people and the policemen are the ones that they are fighting that with. Yes, always, black people. I always knew if I would be stupid if I didn't know black people's lives matter. If right. black people's lives didn't matter, none of us would have still been on this face of the United States. Right, gotcha, gotcha. So so just to clarify, so you you're all for Black Lives Matter. You know that but again you're not necessarily with the movement. And that's cool and that's fine. I, that's great. That's great that I'm I'm glad I mean I'm glad you we be able to clarify that for me too. I understand that too, and I think a lot of people might have that, those same sentiments as well. Let me see who else we got on here. We got we got Jay Edna, uh, Nolan join us. What's going on? We have Inu joining us. What's going on? Uh, we got my man Matt Fernandez joining us too. Welcome everybody to Transition Tuesdays. Hey, so now you know we got an election coming up here in November, right? right. So um, who are you going? Who are you looking to vote for, and why? Are you going to vote for Trump? Or are you going to vote for? Um, or you're gonna vote for Biden? And again, you don't have to answer this question. I mean, because your vote is your vote. But uh, but I'm I'm anxious to hear your take. Who who are you gonna vote for in November? Who am I gonna vote for in November? Yes. I don't wanna go with Donald Trump because I like what Donald Trump is doing. I'm not a, I don't I think he's such a racist. Donald Trump is Donald Trump is almost back there in my time. We okay. The World War. I, I got you. I got you. I got you. All right. So okay. So you're gonna go for Donald Trump? Okay. Do, hey, let me ask you a question, Ms. Galga. Did you vote for Trump in 2016? I sure did. You did. Okay. So you. And, and I was a Democrat, and I, and I, and I, I'm, I'm still support Trump because Trump is speaking facts. He's okay. speaking things that I went through and that I had to go through when I was a child. Gotcha. And I don't consider him being a racist because he stated. He's telling you what went on and what is going on in this country. Okay. And I see where Trump is coming from. And okay. he's trying to bring this country back together and in the head where everybody in this country has a fair share of shake at it. That's what he's going at. Gotcha. I don't see where Trump is so racist. And, okay. and you, Trump was back there when racism was real bad. Back to, like, I'll go back to the farm and the black people worked on the farm and then his father was a... Had a farm and he worked for his father on the farm. Yeah, and he had he had a he had a, a co-op and stuff here in Queens. Yep, I uh, gotta get and, you. And let me tell you something. In those days in time, black people had a hard time. But when they worked for a uh, contagion, those people used to come and bring food, clothes, and everything for those families if they were short on change and didn't have the money. Right. They came and helped people. That's what they did, and I know they did because right. my grandmother's came into this country because my mother's from the Bahamas. Right. My grandfather Seth Steele came into this country before okay. I was born. Okay. So they came here and made them their way in this country and made themselves respect this country. Bought a house below my daddy had his children was born his was born and raised there mm -hmm. and he came a citizen of the United States. Right. He came when he came a a Mason. My mother my mother never changed her citizenship for British. I know, and I and I know, and I know they came up tough. I understand that. Hey, but let me ask you a question, Ms. Gallagher. So let's say, for example, let's say if this president came out and said he is a racist, right? Let's say if he came out and said that, would that change your mind and your vote for him, or would you still vote for him even though if he came out and said, "Hey, look, I'm a racist. I admit it, but again, I I still want to run for president, and I still want your vote." Would you still vote for him if you knew if he came out and said, "Hey, look, I'm a racist." You can be a racist for, 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 what, for what and where. You can be a racist for many things. No, I, I know, but I'm just saying, so that, that, wouldn't, that wouldn't sway your vote at all. Like, if he came out and said he's a racist, that that doesn't concern you, Doc. I, 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 I look at the other opponent that's running against him. Yes, I still vote for him because I don't, the other opponent might be a racist, but he's too much of a coward to come out and say he's a racist. And I listen to okay. uh, Biden. And I was listening to Biden closely with his speaking. Yes. And I don't see where Biden is, is not too much different from Donald Trump. In what sense? In what sense? The way he speaks, the way he's crazy. Like he's crazy. He's crazy too. You say so. <laughs> you don't have to go around here in the first place and explain anybody and explain anything to anybody as to who you are, what you are, you are what you are, and if you come out and speak in terms. Like an intelligent person, yes, people will vote 
food. They will look at you and they will study you. You know, I'm a Democrat. Right. And right now, I will tell you, I don't care who don't care what I say. If mm-hmm. I had to take a choice to vote for president in this country right now, I would still go for Donald Trump. You still go for Donald Trump. Okay, so whatever he's doing, you, you agree upon it? You good yes, with I it? Do. Okay. I do. Right, and and that's why I want you to come on because again, I know how how you know we've talked before in the past how you have experienced racism. So like you've seen it firsthand from the KKK knocking on your door. I mean, there's not a lot of people on this earth who can talk about those stories. So that's why I'm glad I got you on that. You know what I mean? But uh, so in your eyes, okay, this man can't do any wrong. You're gonna be voting for him. No, I don't say he can't do any wrong. All of us do wrong. Right, absolutely. Yes, you're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. But in your but in your eyes, between these two candidates, you're saying you still rocking with you you're rocking with Trump and, and not Biden, right? I see where he's coming from. And if he doesn't make a stand in this country, you will not have any country. If what? If 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 who's if like if Biden's elected, you're saying we won't have a country or no, if he if Donald Trump don't make a stand and what how he feels about this United States, you will not have a country because you will have people come from all over the world. They're doing it now anyway. They will push you around and, and they try to take this country now. And they will take this country from you. You just can't give in to people and be buddy, buddy, holy, holy, holy. <laughs> They're not here for that. They're here to get you out of the way so they can take it over. Mm, okay, so so you're you're a component of you you you're a staunch advocate of like the wall, like he said he was gonna build, and he said that's like almost complete. So like you you were like the you like the wall to be built so these people can't come in. Is that is that what you're saying? Or? Uh, I I support that wall. If people want to come into this country, they come into this country the right way. You can't let people come in, and especially this day and time. Okay. You won't just let people walk into this country, and the next thing you know, they knock it on your door like the KKK when we was coming along with the KKK, and you don't have a country. Right. You got to know who coming into your country. These people can come in here and take knock you on your door, and next thing you know, you dead. He is a Trump, our little old Trump. Trump so, trails me. So he, so he, he's the guy. He's the law and order guy. So he's the guy who's that's gonna right these wrongs. You know what he's doing and everything like that. So you're you're a you're an advocate of that. You're saying right, like he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna get these people out of there who need to be out of there, and you know law and order. You're okay with that, right? Because people want to come into this country, just come in there and walk and take over, and that knocks you out of the out of the loop, and you look around, you outside and you're inside looking and want to know what else happened. Mm-hmm. They've been wanting to take the United States ever since we've been in the Second World War, right? And they're still trying, and right. if you think you're gonna let people come in from another country. They come in here and take your country and do some food. Right. Those people that come in here to this country, they're not poor. They're not hungry. They got homes better than you do. The point is, they want, ever since I've been a child, I've been knowing people from the other part of the world want to take the United States. Mm-hmm. And Donald Trump is a little younger than me, but he was in some of that period, era of it. Gotcha. And all gotcha. All you want to do is get here to take this country, and you're going to see just what racism is about. You will miss it. Like hell, Donald Trump stayed in the White House. Why do anybody want to come to the United States? What? Ask the White House. You, you got your country. Well, I think, well, this this country is supposed to be the land of the free, you know, like dreams coming true. So I think that's why you want, that's why you well, see people coming country. in. No, no, no. They can do the same thing in their country. Yeah, but their country is not like the United States of America in terms of freedom and you have an opportunity to do whatever you can do and be whoever you can be. You know, this this is the land of dreams and opportunity. At least well, that's what they told us. But some of these same people that you talk about want to come in with the land of dreams. They came from their country, country and left their country hungry and destitute and left people poor in their country. Well, we need help. Need nurse care, doctor care, everything. They don't care. All they want is money. The buck, the big buck. That's right. what they think America is. And they don't care about the people. You, will not, you have a country and you love your country. You want to stay in that country and make it in that country. Right. Run from the country and leave people that sick and just to the no food they eat done. They want to come here and grab the money and take it and put it in the bank and let the people stay uh, sick and hungry. Gotcha. I've been in some of those islands. And I, I know. I see what they do to those people in those islands. 
No, nah, I know. I got you. I got you, Ms. Gallagher. Hey, so so the bottom line, and again, I'm going to let you run, Ms. Gallagher. And again, I, I really appreciate you coming on today, uh, you know, just to have the conversation, which we're having, which is great. I mean, to hear your perspective on that. So you're saying, so the bottom line for you is, you know, because again, I, I like to hear people's different perspective on things and candidates and everything as well. But you feel like this president you know, we'll we'll be better off if this if this president is reelected in your in your opinion, correct? I, I don't have like because I don't have a total story. But Donald Trump, Donald Trump is going back in my era, in my era, in my time when this country was racist mm -hmm. and but people still came out of it. People got jobs. People children went to school. They got an education, they, and we had some bad times in this country. Right. People call them crackers. Right. And so, but they came. And they made it. You had some of these same racist white folks, those there, white folks. They came out and helped a lot of black children, a lot mm -hmm. of black kids mm -hmm. make it to this country, this world and be, be successful. Right. They all was bad. Some was bad. Everybody ain't going to be bad all over this world. You're going to have them bad no, no matter how hard you try. They're going to be bad. I got you. I got you. Hey, question for you, Ms. Gallagher, before you begin. I'm sorry to cut you off, but... There, there, there's one person by name Elise. She had a question for you. She wanted to know if you like Obama. You know. <laughs> you don't like Obama? You didn't like President Obama? You didn't I think. I tried with Obama, but I was in that file. That was Democrat. I supported Obama. Okay. Okay. What, what, what didn't you like about Obama? Did you not like about his policies or did you not like him personally? What didn't you like about Obama? I didn't like Obama because to me, I don't care who said it. Obama was a phony. Was a phony? You know, those young college students, okay. radical students out there with the radical bunch right. fighting back with the government and thought he was with the big shot. And okay. they didn't know what, the Democrats didn't know where to go to find them a candidate and they came up with Obama. I don't think Obama was really the president of this country. I really don't. And, and I voted for him. I worked for him. But, and I looked at Obama. He was not ready to be president of this country. Okay. He said he got something stronger. Gotcha. I got, okay, cool. I just wanted to know that. Like, Leah wanted to know. We were both curious on that. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha on that, Leah. I hope she answered the question for you. <laughs> now, hey, so last question I got for you, Ms. Gallagher. And again, I really appreciate you coming on and everything. So you're going to vote, right? So you're a registered voter. You're going to vote. So, like, let's say, for example, if you have to do a um, vote by, by mail or personal vote, like, let's say if you had to do a personal vote and there's long lines, are you going to stay in those lines to vote? Or would you rather do it by mail? But again, the bottom line is you will be voting, correct? I will be voting. Okay, gotcha. Either way, it's like if you got to stay in long lines, you're going to be in the line, right, to vote for Trump, correct? I would say, I would like, I would, if I was in one of those states where I had to stand in line for a long line, my body allowed me Mm -hmm. I stand in line to vote for Donald Trump. I have a problem with Donald Trump. Okay, gotcha. So you'll stay in line. Okay, but you'll vote. But the key, the most important thing that I want everybody to take away is you will be voting, correct? Yes, I'm going to be voting. And I'm not going to stop voting. I'm going to vote for... I, 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 see no, I don't see nobody that Democrats got that I will waste my time voting for. Mm -hmm. None. The Democrats <laughs> have nobody that is out there voting. I and got you. Do, I, I like Joe Biden. But Joe Biden is not strong enough to be the president of this country. Gotcha. Gotcha. Can you do. I'm going back to myself. I've been in this country from a child, and I've been through a Second World War in this country. Right. And I saw what we had to do to get this country together. I... And racism was there, but people still struggling to survive with racism to get where they are today. And, and why should I throw that away? And, you, and, to take some and, and with that being said, you feel that Donald Trump, President Trump, Donald J. Trump gives us the best opportunity for that, correct? I don't say he's the best, but I can say. Well, out of the two candidates, out of these two, out of those two, Joe Biden and 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 and, and Donald Trump. Yes. I'll stick with Donald Trump. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. I got you. I got you. All right. No problem. No problem. And again, hey, Miss Gallagher. Again, that's why I want you to come on because I like to hear from different perspectives, you know, about this election because this election is going to be very important. And again, we can't, you know. The great thing that we're having now, Ms. Gallagher, which is great, is, you know, even though we don't agree, but we can be, you know, we don't have to be disagreeable and we don't have to be disrespectful, which we're not, which is great. We're having great conversation and it's always great to hear the opinions of others. You know what I mean? So, so that's why I'm so glad. 
I'm so glad that you came on today, Ms. Gallagher, to share your story. I really am. No, no, I really am. You know that. You know, and again, and again, I, I'm, I'm so glad that you come on because, again, I love to hear other people's perspective, even though it's not the same one I might share. But again, I like to have you as a form to come on. And you know what we're going to probably do, Ms. Gallagher, too? I'm going to have you on later on, like during the during the elections and all this stuff like that. I might want to have you back on so maybe you could talk to the people and, you know, we can just continue this discussion. Does that sound good? <laughs> well, listen, right. I don't like talking to people because I think that we need to get out of this business of the, of the black and the white and the bad and the bad. Uh-huh. And, 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 and look at what is going on. I, I am right now. If I had to compare Donald Trump with uh, Obama, yes, sorry, I'll take Donald Trump over ninety nine times a day. Okay, Obama gotcha, not a gotcha. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Okay, cool. That's fine. That's fine. That's cool. And anybody who had to go through the Second World War, like yourself, like I did, pick a scrap iron mm-hmm. and fight to see men die to make this country what it is, right? I stand behind somebody with respect for the United States. I'm not just the one just come here from another island. And when my mother and father came to this country, my grandmother and them came to this country, they still from the Bahamas here and did what they had to do. They raised their children, they bought a home, they lived like human beings in this country, right. and they didn't let nothing bother them. We don't know what they did, but they had to do to raise their children and their grandchildren, and they are gone and they left us here. I've been through a lot in this country. Gotcha. I'm from Miami, Florida, and ain't nobody been no more in a racist state than I. But we survived that. With, we used to call them crackers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in Miami. Right. We survived them. People got along with them. Some didn't, some did. And they did, they did all the lynching and all those kind of things. But people know where their perspectives were with these kinds of things. And they try to protect themselves from it. Okay? Mm-hmm. And it's going to happen anywhere. I don't care where you're at. You're going to get this. It's just no preferences out here when it comes to people. But they will continuously to keep stirring and saying things and stirring just to stir up people so people can be so ignorant to themselves they can't think. And that's what the problem is. And I gotcha. think they need to stop it. And I'm sick of it. Gotcha. Well, Ms. Gallagher, I'm going to leave it off on that again. I'm going to have you on again, Ms. Gallagher. So, so I'm going to have you back on again. We're going to talk. We're going to keep this dialogue going. I I really appreciate you coming on to share your stories about racism because I think those are so important that we need to know, especially from the people here now. Get your partake, you know, get your experience about how you dealt with racism. Get your take or even on politics, you know, who you who you might be rolling with, you know, what have you. That's all good. It's all fine. You know, you have a safe place here anytime you want to talk about that with me, Ms. Gallagher, okay? Okay, Robert Russell. We know you before little boy. Keep going. Absolutely. Right. I appreciate that. Right. I appreciate that. <laughs> all right. Ms. Gallagher, I'll be in touch, okay? All right. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> that was Ms. Gallagher there. Now... Again, guys, I want you to keep everything in context. You got to talk about a, a young lady who seen a lot, been a part of a lot. So a lot of, you know, everybody's going to have an opinion. They might not share the same opinions or viewpoint as yourself. But again, I love having people on here that we can have honest dialogue and conversation about these things because these things need to be talked about. So that was Miss Gallagher. Thank you, Miss Gallagher, for coming on. I really appreciate you. <laughs> That was interesting, ladies and gentlemen. If you're sticking around, that was pretty interesting. <laughs> oh, boy, I might need a drink after this. But, hey, I digress. <laughs> hey, so I want to do this, guys, before we before we take off today. And I appreciate all the comments. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to read all the comments, by, especially by uh, Edna, uh joining us and telling us the different things. And, again, I, I appreciate everybody's comments out there. Uh, you know, I wasn't able to read them. During the time I was talking to Ms. Gallagher, but I feel you. But we just got to come from the perspective of how she sees things. And, you know, people are different. But, hey, that's the way it goes. We got Tony Charles watching. What's going on, Tony? What's going on, brother? Welcome to Transition Tuesdays. <laughs> Leah says, get your straw ready, Russ. Absolutely, yes. I-, I think I need a drink after this one, Leah. I definitely do. I definitely do. But before we go, I want to talk about a couple of other things that's going on in our world here. And, um... I want to talk about three giants that left us, man, so suddenly. Uh, especially in the NBA world, 
you had uh, Cliff Robinson, man. Cliff Robinson is a former NBA player, a UConn great. Uh, they called him Uncle Cliffy, man, Uncle Cliffy. And he was really known, like, you know, he was on those great Trailblazers teams. Uh, he won Six Man of the Year award. He was known for those headbands that you see the players wearing now. He made that fashionable back in the day, Cliff Robinson, man. I know he was into the cannabis business. I think that was thriving what he was doing. So we lost a great one in Cliff Robinson here, man. Great plate player. Then next in the basketball world, we also lost Coach John Thompson, man. The Hall of Fame coach at Georgetown University, man. Big John, as they call him, with the towel on his side. You know, this guy, man, the one stat I was reading about John Thompson, which is so impressive, is... Out of 78 of his players that played for him for four years, 75 of those players graduated, man. That's like a over 50 or uh, 95% success rate. People don't talk about that, man. That is major. That is so major about John Thompson. And also, you know, with John Thompson, man, could we use a guy like that now in these times, you know, in terms of protest? Here's a guy when they had the Proposition 48 about not pa not passing that culturally biased test with the SATs, which I know a lot about because I almost didn't pass that when I was going into high school. So he was he went in protest. I remember he walked out of a game. This was like over 30 years ago in protest of Prop 48. You know, here's a guy who protested that deal. So, you know, guys like this, man, John Thompson, man, he had a NCAA championship in 1984. People don't know he has two rings with the Boston Celtics. He backed up Bill Russell. People don't know that. So he was a great player as well. So he has championships. And just like a just like an all of all you know, great coach, Coach John Thompson. Then finally, man, the big one was Chadwick Bozeman. I mean, they all big, but Chadwick, Chad, you know, um, Chadwick Bozeman. Man, what can you say about this this man, this king here, man? You know, he was diagnosed with, with colon cancer four years ago in uh, 2016. But here's a guy who did the movie Jackie Robinson. He did the movie Get On Up that portrayed the life of James Brown, who I played earlier. Um, you know, he played Black Panther. And during this time, you know, he was sick during this time. So how was he able to get himself in that physical shape, you know, having stage three colon cancer and doing that? I mean, that's that shows you a superhero like approach to his life, you know, by him playing Black Panther as well. So. Man, it's just so sad to see all those young men go, you know, Chadwick Boseman in his case. I mean, fighting, man, fighting colon cancer to have the strength to produce great work out there in the arts in terms of movies, just doing that with colon cancer. That's a superhero in itself. So it's, man, it's really sad to see those particular people go. And, um, you know, so rest in peace to all, oh, rest in power to those three young men, Cliff Robinson, Coach John Thompson. And Chadwick Bowen, Bozeman, man, man, great, man. Just, just, you know, just phenomenal. Just phenomenal, phenomenal. We have Tony joining us. What's going on, Tony? Welcome to Transition Tuesdays. Hey, so ladies and gentlemen, before I go get this drink that, that Leah talked about, <laughs> hey, if we were able to make you laugh, smile, or think during this broadcast, my good friends, you have accomplished something major today. So celebrate your victory. You here today celebrate that victory by you being here today. It means a lot. It means so much. Definitely means so much. So as my theme music is playing in the background, I want to thank you all for being part of Transition Tuesdays. This Tuesday and every Tuesday, I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Oh, man. Again, if you miss this show and other shows, you can always go. I'm going to replay it, obviously. But... I also have a YouTube channel called Transition Tuesdays, and I post these. I post all this video and many others like it before. You can always check that on the YouTube channel, um, Transition Tuesdays. Please feel free to do that. Also, if you haven't been following me already, please do so on uh, on Instagram on IG, as the young kids call it, at Our Will Transitions. Love for you to have me fo follow me. Also, if you want to get my book, Transition Game Plan: Simple Steps to Achieving Personal Success. Please do that. You can go to Amazon.com and you can get that as well. So, man, <laughs> and again, before I leave, I'll be remiss. I want to thank Miss Gallagher for coming on the show today to give some viewpoints. Uh, you know, again, we're different. It's great to hear everybody's opinion. And I'm glad she had the courage to come on today. So 
Miss Gallagher, I salute you. And again, we're going to have you back on. So we got, we're going to talk more politics and everything as this process, political cycle is going down. So we're going to have Miss Gallagher on again. And hopefully you'll tune in for that one as well as you did today. So again, Miss Gallagher, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. So as we say in parting, ladies and gentlemen, Transition Army, as we say in parting, <laughs> I can't look at my nose because I'm being frazzled here, but happy transitioning. And we'll talk to you soon. Take care, everybody. Be safe. Okay? And if you like me, you're going to join me in a drink after listening to this, con <laughs> after listening to this conversation. Take care, everybody.